Joining us on this Friday, News Roundup Information Overload Hour. You know, she's been one of my best friends forever. And sometimes she's so hard to be friends with because she just, she gets me in trouble all the time. And I love her to death. I knew her mother before she passed away. I promised that I'd get her married by now. I've totally failed her mother. And she's uh, actually one of the funniest people I know. And people don't know how to take her sometimes is Ann Coulter. How are you? Right back at you. Well, I lo- well, I do love you. You're like my other sister. You know that. Um, but you get me in trouble all the freaking time. Okay. I want to talk about the news. Okay, I was listening okay. to that, frantically raising my hand, saying, um, but Hillary's running for the same job as Donald Trump, so maybe she's not the most objective source. Just, just hear me out. See, she's running for the same office. I love how the media thinks this is huge breaking news. Hillary thinks Donald Trump is un qualified. Um, but the major news in the newsmaker item today um, is, I don't know if you've noticed, I've been trolling Tom Lamas on ABC, who apparently said, um, it was played for me over the phone um, by one of my friends who saw it, on ABC World News Tonight, he talks about Donald Trump's charge, I guess on your show, um, well, his restatement of a proved fact, Juanita Broderick being raped by Bill Clinton. They mentioned that on ABC World News Tonight. Last night, Sean Hannity, um, and Tom Lama says those charges are from decades ago and have been discredited. This is Andrew, uh, Andrea Credit. Mitchell did this, and Juanita took right back at her. God bless that woman. Anyway, I've been trolling him all night on Twitter um, no. again today, and I think it's time that, you know, your 20 million listeners write into Tom Lamas. I've simply been asking first, admittedly, a few times. I was cross with him, um, but now I am seriously asking, when and how were they discredited? This is the Hitler Goebbels big lie. Even the Clintons don't say discredited. They say old news, old news. When and how were they discredited? And I would remind your listeners, NBC Lisa Meyer spent about a year investigating this story. Um, while Nita Broderick did not want to come forward with it, I'm sure you've interviewed her and talked to her on your show, but she was a Democrat. She supported Bill Clinton. Um, she, like all the other, quote, bimbo eruptions, George Stephanopoulos would go around and get affidavits from all these women, and then they'd laugh about it. That's all in Carl Bernstein's book. Um, and, and I might add, in George Stephanopoulos, Stephanopoulos' book, too. That was their weapon. They'd go to these women and, and, you know, implicitly threaten them and say, here, sign this affidavit. So they could line up all the affidavits, but finally Juanita Broderick comes out, tells the truth. NBC investigated that six ways from Sunday. These were all Hillary and Bill Clinton supporters. I used to run into them at parties in New York, and they'd come up to me and say, oh my gosh, we investigated, we tried to find a hole in her story, she's telling the truth. These are cameramen, gaffers, reporters working on the story, the investigators. You will also remember Chris Shays, whom I threatened to run against, my congressman, was one of the big, you know, showboating Republicans going out saying, oh, this is about Clinton's personal life. We're voting against impeachment. There were five Republicans who vote against impeachment. After, I believe it was after the impeachment vote, you know, good thinking Sherlock, um, Chris Shays goes down into whatever, the basement of the Longworth building, looks through the files, reads the Juanita Broderick story, and comes out shaken and white-faced and says, I should have voted to impeach. I mean, the evidence here is overwhelming. She, she was in a hotel room. Clinton um, finagled his way in to talk about um, um, nursing right, You know what? You're, 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 this is very important. Let me play the Andrea Mich- Mitchell cut so everybody knows I really exactly. Think Lamas is bigger. Okay, but let me play the, well, it started with Andrea. Do you mind? Let me do my own show my way. All right, I love you to death, but let me play it so people understand where it started. Now, remember, too, the first interview that NBC didn't want to run. It was public pressure that made them run this interview with Lisa Myers. I did the second interview with Juanita Broderick right after that, but this was Andrea Mitchell last night. Last night, Trump fired a shot squarely at Clinton's husband, former President Bill Clinton. In one case, it's about exposure. In another case, it's about groping and fondling and touching against a woman's will. And rape. And rape. Donald Trump using that word unprompted during an interview last night with Fox News' Sean Hannity, bringing up a discredited and long-denied accusation against former President Bill Clinton, dating back to 1978 when he was Arkansas Attorney General. Wow. 
Wow, it's never and been discredited. You're a thousand percent correct. But what, why don't they? Ju- why doesn't he respond to me? I've, I've I've been playing good cop today after bad cop last night, saying you know we don't have to involve the ABC brass. We'll keep it between us. Just tell me when and how were these charges discredited? They Ever, never were not discredited. Listen, I've now interviewed Juanita three times. I've interviewed Kathleen Willie numerous times, Paula Jones numerous times. I only mention those three cases. Kathleen Willie says she has talked to many other women that are also afraid to come forward. Oh, of In course. The case of- and by the way, I mean, I love you. You're not the most objective source. But, but this is ABC, NBC, CBS have interviewed these women. Um, their evidence is overwhelming. Oh, I was starting to say, um, Juanita Broderick, she was in the hotel room. Her pantyhose are ripped. Her lip is bleeding. She was staying. She was in Little Rock for a conference on nursing homes. That's when, and she had met Bill Clinton. He allegedly wanted to talk to her about nursing homes. He comes to the hotel and says, oh, you know, I'm running for governor. Um, there will be too many photographers down here in the hotel cafe. Would you mind if I just came up to your room? And that's when it happened. So Juanita Broderick's roommate, they were staying in a, a hotel room together to attend this conference, comes back up, finds her disheveled, pantyhose ripped, um, again, lip bleeding, and Juanita Broderick told her the truth right then and there, as NBC found out. She told four of her other friends, she told her boyfriend at the time, um, these are all contemporaneous accounts, and yeah, she was, she was in denial um, three weeks later, um, she didn't want to talk about it, she didn't want to go public, it's humiliating. Um, and she's, she's at some big fundraiser. She's still a Democrat. Um, Clinton for governor. Hillary comes up to her at that um, fundraiser three weeks later, and it's in a lovely home, touches her arm and says, Bill and I appreciate everything you do for us, Juanita. Do you understand everything? And grabbing um, so her hand. Is, I replayed this interview yesterday, so what you're just, describing is exactly what she told me. Yeah, it isn't just Clinton. It's Hillary trying to portray these women on, on 60 Minutes. I mean, this was a voluntary mistress, not one of Clinton's sexual assaults. But with Jennifer Flowers, oh, my gosh, do you remember the way they went after her? And in that 60 Minutes interview, Hillary Clinton described her as a loony bird, saying she'd call up and she was distraught and saying wacky things. Um, she was the one, through Sidney Blumenthal and others, and this is from her friend uh, Diane Blair, um, close friend said she portrayed Monica Lewinsky as a looney tune. She was a stalker. She was trying to blackmail the president. She was perfectly willing to to completely muddy up and destroy these women um, whose only sin was being targeted by her husband for sexual assault. You know, in the case of all of these women, though, they all all have been consistent in their stories, and they all have been have well, suffered and have been smeared and slandered. George Stephanopoulos would, would collect. You know, Mr. Objective News Journalist, George Stephanopoulos, no. he was the one put in charge of, as the campaign called it, Bill Clinton's bimbo eruptions. They had seen what happened mm-hmm. to Gary Hart, um, and per Hillary's instructions, uh, they went around and, and, I mean, they tracked down Sally Perdue, this time again a voluntary mistress. You have to distinguish the voluntary mistresses from the victims of Clinton's sexual assault. Sally Perdue left the country after the affair. He was running for governor. This is before president. She's in China teaching, teaching English to the blind. Um, and she's up trekking, and she said in 1998 the Clintons came. There was a raid at her hotel. This is all written up, of course, in the British press, not in the American press. And uh, she just thought... Um, her hotel is raided. She's accused of having drugs. As the Clintons are in town, she says they're just trying to tell me they can find me any place. I can go to China, and this can happen. And this this was the modus operandi: get them to sign the affidavits. Monica Lewinsky signed an affidavit. Remember that was part of the obstruction of justice charge against Bill Clinton. He gave her a memo points to make in an affidavit. She produced an affidavit denying any sort of involvement with Bill Clinton. Well, ha-ha, we now have the blue dress. So the affidavits from these the, the Clinton you know, bimbo eruptions are meaningless. This was part of the obstruction of justice. You know what also is amazing? Think about how the New York Times piece this week just backfired and blew up in their face. Now, I interviewed three of the women. I interviewed the, the girlfriend. Oh, that was hilarious. I loved that piece. I know. I, I interviewed her. I interviewed Carrie Prejean, Miss California 2009. They're all livid. Did and they're all using words like the new... Oh, yeah. I mean, they, they perp- we called the two guys that wrote the piece. There was a great piece by Camille Paglia today Not that I think mine. was... 
will you stop? And the, you know, the whole world doesn't revolve around you every second. We love you a lot, so relax. And Camille crazy. Pagula was just hilarious in her piece today, uh, writing about this. But think about how profound this is: is that they tried to take Trump out this week on the issue of how he treats women. The women ran to his defense. He's doing an interview with me. I'm talking about fundamental fairness. When are they going to do pieces in the New York Times about Paula, Kathleen, and Juanita? And he brings up one word, and it explodes into a major backfire all against the Clintons. It's been a hell of a week for Donald Trump. Yeah, no, he's he's amazing. He's amazing. And th- thank heaven, I mean, not taking Laura's name in vain. Thank God it is Donald Trump, because he's the only one who would bring this up and go after it. He is not the typical Republican and Democrats whomever their nominee is, have got to be terrified. Thank oh, heaven well. we finally have a champion who will who will take take our call. You know what I said about Donald Trump this week? I have thought through this all throughout the process as I would interview a lot of the candidates. And, and I said at CPAC 2015, I'm going to interview them all again and again and again and again and again, and I'm not going to endorse it. I'm going to let people decide. And what's so fascinating to me is now I now look at this, and I was looking closely. I think Donald Trump by far, is the most courageous and bold and the toughest candidate that Republicans have put up since Reagan. He's yeah, well, not going to take that any... Six months before you did. <laughs> He's not... No, and I don't... Listen, but I did... We all we all have our jobs, and relax. Fine. You led the parade. Is everything about you? Everything um, about you? Seriously? You got to write... Can I, can I just make Lomas my point? My point... ABC, at... Tom Lamas, capital ABC, and ask him where, where, what, what the evidence is that Juanita Broderick has been discredited, because this is going to go on and on and on. This is the big lie from the media, um, and they, can't, they seem to think it's still the 1990s and they can get away with this, that people can't go on the internet and find out the truth anymore. I mean, it really, it was a frightening world. I'm, one of the wonderful things Trump has done has made, I mean, the power of Twitter <laughs> to communicate with people. I mean, Reagan had to give big speeches and count on ABC, NBC, CBS reporting it. Not Donald Trump. He's going straight to the people with his Twitter feed. Um, they, get, they can't get away with crap like this anymore. Juanita Broderick's rape claim against Bill Clinton was, quote, discredited. It, it, it really is an amazing time. You think about it. This was supposed to be the week that the narrative advanced that there is a gender war by Donald Trump Trump, who doesn't respect women, the women came to his defense, and Donald Trump was able to flip it on the Clintons in a way that, think back to 1998, and you were on this program so often, and you wrote a book about impeachment, and we discussed it at length, and he was able to bring this to the forefront like no other candidate I'd ever seen. Go back and watch Romney, and watch Dole, and watch McCain. McCain wouldn't even mention Reverend Wright. He barely mentioned Ayers and Dorn. And finally, we have a Republican that's willing to fight to stand in the arena, not take their BS and fight. And you're right about one other thing. The world has changed. When a presidential candidate can go on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter and have more impact than $100 million worth of ads in a state, it is a profound shift in a power base in terms of how people get information. Number one, I think McCain voted for Obama. Um, number two, but did you miss the part in that New York Times story where I think it, um, they, they had four corroborating witnesses Donald Trump winked at a woman once. All right, I got to go. Ann Coulter, don't you miss me? I miss you horribly, Sean Hannity. Yeah, I've, I've failed your mother. Your mother's looking down at me like so disappointed because you're, you're a pain in the neck. True. You're, you're very difficult. True. I know. I'll try and fix on it. On my mother, not on me being difficult. Okay, good to talk no, to you, Sean. Th- no, she agrees with me. She even told me you were difficult, but she loved you to death.